Welcome to Uncertain TV. I'm here today with Eusta Valk and we're going to be talking about the very important topic for international CEOs that is HRefline. So hi Eust. Hi. Thank you for being here. M my pleasure. So HRefline, a topic that strikes dread into many people but is <laughs> equally very important if you have an international site. Uh, yes, well sometimes it really depends on whether you need to use it or not but it, it can be very important if you have uh, specific languages that you want to target uh, uh, and that you're not targeting specific re regions with specific websites. You can you can do an awful lot of things with hreflang that you couldn't before that. So for that, for those people it's very useful. So just for people who are still thinking maybe not quite sure what exactly it is and, and what that means, what is it? So hreflang is a set of metadata to indicate to Google how you, which pages it should serve to whom. So if you have, for instance, a US version and a UK version of your site, you can mark them up with hreflang, and Google will tell, will know by, with that markup, if you do it right, it will know which to give people from Great Britain the, the right pages that you have marked up as saying, this is the British page, and to give people from the US the, the pages that you've marked up as being for the US. You can do that for regions, you can do that across languages, um, and you can do that for for well a, a, a few different sets of reasons, but most of the times it's for regions. If you're just doing it for languages, maybe you don't need it because then maybe a top level domain is already enough. Um, but in, in most cases where where you are targeting regions, then it becomes very important to to do it right. Now you just mentioned the top level domains there, so this is a situation where there's sometimes confusion. People think I've got I'm targeting different markets. I need to implement hreflang but of course that's not always the case and certainly with cctlds for example it's yeah. a definite no-no uh, cctlds were a heck of a lot easier than hreflang was yeah um so uh, it, it was in the old days a lot easier to do uh, uh, uh more example.de example.fr and example.com for yeah. uh, for all the english english language stuff um with hreflang, you can still do that. You can still have all those domains, and yeah. I would actually recommend that you still do. Yeah. Uh, but with hreflang, you get a bit more granularity, and you could also more easily do it on one domain if you don't yeah. have all those top-level domains. Of course, especially for newcomers to the market, it's very hard often to get all the domains and all the different yeah. CCTLDs uh, because they're usually sold. So um, for people like that, hreflang is very useful. If you have all the top level domains and you're only targeting very specific markets that have their own CCTLD, yeah. just having the CCTLD might be enough. Yeah, but it's when you are dealing with more complicated sites where you're targeting multiple regions who speak the same language and yeah. you have got very specific content intended for them. Yeah, so uh, apparently English in the UK and English in the US are considered uh, the same language, even though they're not by far, of course. No. <laughs> <laughs> but um, in many ways, for especially for a machine, it is. And yeah. um, well, for cases like that, you very often run into the problem like, like okay, we don't have the co-UK. We have a .com, but we want to target specifically users in the UK with different pages. Yeah. Well, that's what hreflang allows you to do. So in terms of the implementation, we know that it's not necessarily the easiest thing always to implement, and that in many cases it is incorrectly. Yeah, it's incredibly hard to get it right, um, especially because the documentation is not always um, that clear on how stuff works. What's really important is to decide how to implement it. There's a couple of options. You can do it with HTML tags on every page. You can do it with header uh, settings, where you just send out HTTP headers and uh, for every page. Or you can do it in the XML sitemap. I personally prefer the XML sitemap because it's usually easier, easier to maintain, and it doesn't add like five to 10 lines of code to every page, page. that you send to users, because users will never care about those hreflang, uh, that hreflang markup. No browser does anything with it. It's a completely well hidden thing for, for people. It's only there for robots, so it should be in the XML sitemap, in my opinion. Um, but then still, it's, it's rather hard to get it right. The markup is non-trivial. Um, it's very important that you check both whether you get the language code right and the country code right. Yeah. And the country code is actually a region code, so you can target some regions, but not all of them. So you can't do ENEU, which a lot of people seem to want to try, like they do English for the entire European yeah. Union. You can't do that. But you can do English for everyone. 
and then specifically ENGB, for instance. So you can have an English page EN for everyone and then an ENGB page for the people in Great Britain. Yeah. And then P Google will send the, P the people from Great Britain to ENGB and everyone else to EN. But there's also a lot of things that you can't do. So if you wanted to target, for, for instance, specifically Scotland, you can't. No. Which is a shame in many ways. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe that's the next step up, although... I hope not. That's got to add more complicated... <laughs> exactly. It's, it's complicated enough as it is, and to add more to it would probably make it impossible to implement for people. And even in, talking about, you know, the GB there, that's something, because many people, you know, the UK is often... Or GB is Great Britain is often referred to as the UK, so it would be fairly understandable that people might think, all oh, right, I'll target the UK and use that code. It doesn't actually exist and therefore it's not going to yeah. work. Yeah, it's also, it's weird because GB is, well, Great Britain, but Great Britain is an, is the name of the island, right? Yeah. I, that's how I learned it in high school. I'm, <laughs> I'm Dutch, so I might not get it all right. But it's, yeah, it is weird. And there, there's a more a couple of more weird things there. And I think that Google gets those by now. So if you do ENUK, it'll get it because UK doesn't actually stand for any Anything other country. Else, yeah. But if you're doing things wrong where where the country code is actually another country, then it's very hard for Google to say, so what did you really mean? Yeah, why are you targeting this market that speaks Japanese with Spanish, for yeah. example? Why, why are you doing ENLA where, you're, where you are meaning to target Latin America, yeah, where it actually Latin. is Laos? Yeah. And those are quite different countries. So, yeah. <laughs> but they're, both of them can be targeted with English, and it's, it's very, uh, well, it, it, you could very well want to target allow us with, with an English page. Yeah. So Google can't tell that you're doing it wrong. Yeah. And other than the kind of codes and what you're using, what are the other common mistakes that, or the easy mistakes that people can make without? Really? So the most common one probably is the missing return link where, where you have page A saying that it's in German and, that, and it has a meta tag or an XML sitemap tag that says page B is the English version of that. And then on page B, it doesn't say that page A is the German version. So it always has to be reciprocal. It always has to be reciprocal, otherwise it won't work, which is also why it takes some time to pick up because Google has to spider all the versions. Yeah, and you have to make sure you're linking in yeah. every version of every page. Yeah, it's so it's, it, it's because of that, it becomes pretty cumbersome. Um, and what happens a lot is that you have this markup and at one point it works. And then someone decides to change a URL and that URL gets redirected and hreflang stops working. So there is a lot of um, maintenance that has to go into that, into making sure that the, all those tags are, are kept up to date and are still correct and everything points at the right URL. Yeah, so once it's not a case of once it's once you've got it on there, you can sit back and think, tick, we've done that. It's, yeah, it's an ongoing well, that's job. That's usually what happens. And then six months later, you have to call that consultant again to <laughs> say, hey, it's not working anymore. What did we do wrong? Well, you, you, changed you didn't keep everything in check and you changed something and now it's broken. And then you go in again and you change it. It's, it's probably true for a lot of SEO processes these days. I mean, the same goes for Canonical. Uh, if you break that, well, it's, it breaks your site. And with with HREFLANG, it can break targeting very easily. So um, you need to audit it all the time. And people might be listening to this and you're thinking, oh, we we're going to try and take our site into some new countries. I'm not sure we want to now because this just sounds really complicated. <laughs> yeah. What would you say to people with that? Is it is it a barrier really to being able to effectively target other markets? Well... If that is the barrier and you've covered everything else that you need to do, then I, yeah. I by all means go and do it. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a lot of things that are a lot harder about internationalization yeah. and hreflang. I mean, the entire process is is extremely hard. Yeah. Um, having done it for a couple of countries now, where where I don't n know the, the the other market very well, it it's so incredibly hard to get that right. And yeah. You, you, you keep figuring out that you actually need to change more than just the, the language on your page. You need to change layout of pages. You need to change the entire way that you present stuff. The type of content yeah. that you share. Yeah, so it's, yeah. Um, it's a lot more work than just hreflang. Um, hreflang might be an easy fix for some, uh, for some things that you already have going. Uh, but yeah, by all means, if, if you have problems, uh, hreflang is probably the last one on the list. Yeah. <laughs> And it's not very easy to just, it's, as we've talked about, it's quite complicated. So say, give a tip for getting it right with hreflang. It's not really 
it's not as easy as saying just go and do this but what would you say to people looking to do this working on hrf flag now what are the main fundamentals they really need to get right um so the main fun the fundamental thing is okay determine which languages you're targeting and which regions and determine whether you really should only target languages at, or whether you should really target regions at all. In, in a lot of cases, it's very sensible to just target all of the English and language speakers and um, just target EN and not ENGB or ENUS, but just EN. Yeah. And to have a catch-all version at least for, for, you know, for every big language out there. So that's probably the, the first thing that you think about. The second thing is, okay, if we're going to do this technical implementation, let's make sure that we do it right and that we document it right why we made the choices that we did. Yeah. And every time you make changes to anything on your website, really, you go back into that process. And I guess make sure that everybody understands why it's there, yeah. that it's important, so that when other people make changes, they understand the implication. Yeah. It's, there's a lot of meta tags on a page right now. And if you do choose, choose a meta tag implementation, well, to make sure that every meta tag is so properly documented that that people won't go and say like, okay, we don't need this anymore, right? And scrap and scrape it away, and then you get like, oh damn, we can start all over again. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for talking to us. My pleasure. Mm -hmm.